Hey y'all, happy baby Friday. <laughs> um, we are back for our next session of healthcare happenings. Uh, I did not do a session last Thursday because I was at the NEMAS conference Oop. with my good friend Sonal. Sorry, I got my, hold on a second, my, there we go. My um, uh, audio was coming on my other laptop thing, so I'll turn it off. Um, <laughs> So uh, I was at the NamUs conference with my good friend here, Sonal Patel, and uh, it kind of gave me the idea for doing today's broadcast session on uh, continuing education. Um, so um, as y'all come in, make sure you give us a little hi and everything so we know people are out there listening to us. Um, and so Sonal graciously agreed to come on with me again. Uh, Y'all probably remember Sonal was on with me a hmm, um, few months back with a group when we were doing stuff on networking, right, Sonal? That's right. Hey, Betty. So, so good to see you, my friend. You too. Uh, I was going to tell you, I see you in your nice little sweater and everything. I say it, it, it is, it's really, it, it got cold here. It was like, um, I think it's only like 70 right now. So, <laughs> and then, <laughs> Just, just you know, just, just have to rub it in a little bit. Um, yes, but, oh my god, I would take that seventy in a heartbeat. I love it. Oh my goodness! I was like looking for my sweater. So um, we see uh, Lamontica is on saying, "Hey, ladies!" So hey, Lamontica and yeah, Edmundo cool. Gonzalez is on. Um, hi, pleasure to have you on. Uh, glad people are starting to trickle in. Oh, and there's oh, my hey, friend, lady. lady. We love our hey, lady. lady. I love her. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, so uh, to give you, for those of y'all that are not familiar with Sonal, which I can't imagine there are too many, uh, but Sonal is a um, multi-specialty healthcare consultant in uh, coding, auditing, compliance. Um, she's been in the industry for um, uh, over 12 years, right, Sonal? That's right. And um, she uh, began a, a secondary career, you know, as she's switching in the healthcare profession, as a lot of us do, into um, uh, being a medical biller and then started to advance now to where she is today working with uh, hospital centers and attorneys and helping physicians and practices um, certified under multiple different organizations like AAPC, um, PMI, uh, and uh, AMBA, right? Are you certified with AMBA or just a member? I'm, I'm a member. I love AMBA. Okay. Uh, same with NamUs. We're both members of NamUs, um, yep. uh, another really great organization for uh, auditing specialists. Yep. Um, so we're seeing uh, more people. Oh, I just wanted to put this up here, Sonal. So lady is like, who does not know Sonal Patel? So, oh, my goodness. So. You are so sweet. So sweet. And um, Sonal also has a podcast uh, called Paint the Medical Picture, which uh, y'all should check out. I love listening to the podcast. And uh, coming to the end of the year, I know y'all get all your like facts and figures and all that kind of stuff. And you are, are ranking uh, up there pretty high uh, with a lot of the categories with your podcast, right? I am. I love my little podcast, right? This is the second year. It just brings me a lot of joy, right? To give back to the community. That was my original goal when I developed the concept for it, right? Um, back in the day, I was new to podcasting and big shout out to Brian Kui. I'm sure he's not on today, but he was the one who really pushed me to go ahead and start my own little podcast. Yeah. So the numbers are pretty phenomenal. Um, I'm in the top three of the medical billing and coding podcast genre. So that's pretty good for being in my second year. Um, and I just love that people tune in um, send me questions and I just love what I do. So the more support I get, the more followers I can keep doing this. Right. Love it. Yep. That's wonderful. That's so, so great. So proud of you. That's really Thank neat. You. Thank you. And I'm, um, looking to take 
our broadcasts here and, um, you know, have them moved over into doing some podcasts with them also. So, um, you know, still trying to <clears throat> work through the particulars of that with my IT uh, people trying to help me figure out how to do it correctly. So, so I'm still, I'm still working on it. I know I've been talking about this now for a few months, but it's a little more involved, you know, to get it going and to pick out the right thing to use and all that kind of stuff. So for those of y'all that have heard me say it before, I'm still working on it and still planning on doing it. So um, continue to listen for updates on uh, that uh that uh, subject there. But um, today's subject, uh, we have, um, oh, Haley is on. Hi, Haley. Happy Thursday to see, uh, happy to see and learn from you both this afternoon. Very nice. Um, all right. So today, what I wanted to talk about was continuing education, right? So um, with Sona, with what you do and and your path in your career, you have um, you started out in one place as I did. You know, I started out. Oh my gosh, I started out as an X-ray tech, and um, we were. I worked at a hospital that it wasn't the county hospital because we technically didn't have one, but it was the county hospital, you know, so we would get everything nobody else wanted. And um, we had uh, it was with a um, uh, it was a uh, the hospital had a contract with one of the biggest prisons in the state. Uh, Stateville, you know, you remember it says, since you're in Illinois, I know that name you'll understand. Um, so we used to get those gentlemen, you know, over and we would have to, you know, work on them and do things. And um, uh, sometimes they weren't the most pleasant, as you can imagine. Uh, and it's hard sometimes to be working with a patient when there's like five and six security, you know, six prison guards around them and they're, you know, shackled. <laughs> so we would have some interesting, you know, little exchanges. And um, I got to uh, x-ray Richard Speck, um, you know, not exactly a big highlight of my career, um, but it was uh, it was a pretty scary experience. Um, and, you know, we would do dead bodies that would be brought in. We would have body parts come in from the corner uh, saying, oh, you know, this this person was burned. Can you x-ray them and see if you get, there's a bullet in there because they wanted to know if somebody shot them and then tried to burn them to hide the evidence kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, we would just get all kind. And it was just it was too much. I was just like, OK, I just I, I've had it. <laughs> just so <laughs> done. <laughs> and, and, so I, I was like, I, I want to do something else. And, you know, when I talked to the people at the hospital, they were like, oh, we have, you know, we've got five healthcare systems. We've got five clinics. You know, you can pick your clinic, pick whichever one you want to go to. You know, you've got terminology, you've got this and that. We think you'd be a really good fit in the clinics then. Um, but I didn't want to x-ray in the clinic. See, I just I didn't didn't want to do it anymore. Too touchy feely for me, you know. And so I chose a clinic that was like five minutes from my apartment where I was living at the time. And, um, you know, I, I got in there and and um, they set me in a room with a CPT and an ICD-9 back then. We had just gone to nine coming off of eight. Yes, that's how old I am, y'all. Uh, and, and a Hick fix book. And then they came back after two weeks and they said, okay, we have your desk. So I was like, oh, maybe they were getting my desk ready. Maybe that's why I've been sitting in here all by myself. And so they take me to my desk. And back then, remember those gigantic computers with the monochrome green screens that took up like the whole desk, you know? So they're like, okay, there's your desk. And I was all excited because when you work in radiology, you don't have any personal, you have a little locker, but everything else is communal space. You don't have any kind of private space to do anything. And so I sit down at my desk and they said, okay, your training's over, get to work. So me sitting by myself, staring at coding books was my training in coding. Nice. So for me, you know, and back then we didn't even have 
coding as a profession. Yeah. You know, it was insurance clerks or they had all these other names for things. And there really wasn't a lot of education out there. So you were kind of on your own. Mm -hmm. And I would call some of the other clinics you know, and they would call me. And so we were trying to figure out like, how did you find this? And where was this? And how would you do this? And, you know, so we were really just using each other to try to figure things out. And um, as I got more and more into things and kind of it like sparked on me, I was like, this is pretty cool. I can, you know, get into this stuff. And um, then I learned about, I went to uh, another organization and I learned somebody had come to me and said, you know, there's this, um, this certification that they have that you can get for coding. And I was like, oh, really? And they said, yeah. And, and they said, you know, we just took, um, they just had sent like, I think four of the staff from this place. They flew them out somewhere to have like a boot camp and then mm -hmm. to take the certification exam. It was a CPC exam. And um, this was back oh, uh, in the in the early 80s. And so they told me about it and said, we think you should take this because you're one of the team leads, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, OK. So, you know, I went through the, the exam um, and got certified and, um, you know, then started to, you know, learn more and more and get different things under my belt and start teaching and things like that. And so for me coming in, I was in that mindset of, you know, what can I learn? What can I learn? Where can I learn it? You know, there just wasn't that much out there. Now, everywhere you turn, you know, they've got education out there. And so I, I think the, for me, looking at the CE continuing education issue is about, um, you know, how is it going to benefit you, you know, as, as for your profession, for what you're trying to do and, you know, what interests you too. Cause sometimes I listen to stuff or attend things that don't necessarily have anything to do with what I'm currently doing, but I find it interesting. So I'm like, Oh, that sounds cool. And, you know, I'll kind of go and listen to something else. So uh, I've always had that mindset of CE, you know, education, mm -hmm. education. And I think a lot of this in the profession, you know, also have that mindset and you need that mindset. So um, what was your kind of exposure into that kind of arena of like getting your mindset to continuing education? Well, I mean, I loved hearing about your experience, right? Because it's much broader than mine, right? But I agree with you completely that education is the key, right? Because when I started, I pivoted from a different career field, right? I think people in this audience hopefully have heard me say that in, in the past, um, you know, transitioning from the liberal arts humanities world to the career focused on science um, was a lot of me educating myself, right? So my transition into this space was all about education from day one. Um, so I really value it. I totally believe in continuing education, not only, and I know we'll get into this in a bit, but you know, who needs continuing education is the question on the screen, right? In this field, in the business of healthcare that we participate in, I think it's fundamental that we do need continuing education. Um, no matter if we possess and hold the credential right now, or if we're going to get it down the line once we get a little bit more experience, um, Regardless, I believe continuing education is a must. We have to do our very best to find those people, find those outlets, those educators, or those organizations that provide continuing education courses, webinars, boot camps, whatever they're called. Um, in terms of you know how you can squeeze it into your schedule, right? Because the goal, obviously, is for everyone to have a nine to five type of job, right? You need that experience somewhere, right? In the hospital system, in the office, um, 
over the phone, remotely. However, uh, the goal is to somehow participate in the healthcare industry. Um, start somewhere, right? I started, I fantasized about the hospital system, right? I had that really naive dream in the very, very beginning that, oh, I'm going to just apply to a million hospitals and I'm going to get that job, right? Very naive, even, even though, again, I was in my second career, much older, but I was still naive thinking that I could just do it, right? No, it didn't happen that way. I didn't go work in the hospital system like I wanted to, simply because it was right there outside my door. I had like 15 brilliant hospitals in Houston that I could choose from, right? But I was new in the industry, so it didn't happen, right? So I started my career as a biller, but even that, it took a lot of legwork. Like I applied, 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 picked up the phone, and finally this one organization took a chance on me, right? And I just worked really hard and continued the education even while I was working there. Um, and that organization was, you know, hell bent on making sure that the good um, people, the good staff members at this organization, if they wanted to elevate them, if they saw something in them, they were like, you're going to become a certified medical coder through PMI. That was the organization that they supported, they believed in. And so back at that time, I had attorneys come to this office space and teach us. Um, those attorneys, I still am in touch with. They're still a part of the organization and teach for PMI. So it's fantastic. Um, yeah. So that's just one example, right, of how you can definitely keep growing your career. And it's really helpful if someone is on your side, if someone supports you, sees something in you. And I know you and I, when we were catching up last week at the conference together, we totally believe in supporting this next wave of people, right? This next generation of the coders, the billers, the compliance professionals, right? People who are just starting because like we're sharing on this um, healthcare happenings today, we started somewhere. We both have disclosed right now, very honestly, where we started, right? And it was a long time ago. Um, yes. And people took chances on us and saw something. And so I know you and I are big believers in that as well as we want to help other people. Um, yep. And again, do the right thing. And you have to do the right thing by getting education. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and, and yeah, so the, the, the reason why when I was, when we were talking about, you know, how we were going to go about uh, discussing today's topic, um, the first thing that I put up here about who needs coding edu uh, continuing education or CE, you know, um, is because I, I, when you think about it, and I started to think about the different places um, as we were talking right before, you know, you have physicians, of course, that need CME. You also have attorneys, teachers, nurses, engineers. So when you think about all of those professions, that's what I wanted people to start hearing in their head was it, they're professionals that need continuing education. So you know, people that may be listening and that are watching or are participating with us today um, to not have that mindset of I'm a coder, I'm a biller, or especially when I hear I'm just yes. a coder. We need to you stop know, I'm using just. that word just. Just eliminate yeah. it from your vocabulary. Yeah, that's yeah. very self-deprecating, right? Yes. Yeah. But you are a healthcare professional. And right. so that's when I um, discuss the positions and this um, uh, this profession, that is how I put it out now. And I also, when I talk about coding, I talk about coding professionals and not coders. You know, I always try to kind of tag in there the profession, you know, to get that profession, profession and professional thing out there so that, you know, even people that are within that profession, you know, I think need to hear it more to get that mindset in there that, um, you know, you're a professional, you're a healthcare professional. And as such, you know, continuing education is necessary 
for you to, you know, stay on top of regulations that change every year, if not more often. CMS changes their mind every time they pull out a Kleenex to blow their nose. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it is yes. always, you know, we got new CBT codes coming out. We have new ICD-10 codes uh, every year. And, and, you know, so you can't be in what we do on the coding, billing, auditing side of this profession and not be looking to have continuing education. I mean, if you don't, you're going to get rolled over and it's like walking in. I've been in offices. I went into a practice once, I swear. So I go into this practice once and um, I have back then before you had all the electronic gizmos and stuff, you had to actually carry your books with you. So <laughs> I have my CBT book and I can't remember what year it was. Let's say 2015 just to so I'm, I'm sitting with my cpt i get my cpt book out and i notice and you know back then they used to change the color yes, of the cover did. every year and i noticed that theirs weren't the same color as mine which is what shot my eye interest first and i said um do y'all have this year's cpt book the do you have current coding billing material because now this was like in june so it's not like it was january and they said oh we were just waiting for it or something no they, they well should have had their stuff and she says um no doctor doctor doesn't you know he doesn't think that you know having those books every year is necessary that we can just like write in the old ones if there was any changes and cross out the codes that aren't valid anymore. And so I said, Oh, um, <clears throat> what, what year is your, they had had that CPT book for five years and were, there was markings all over it. They were crossing stuff out and highlighting stuff and writing a whole new, I mean, it was a mess. And, and what they did, I can't remember their specialty, but there had been a lot of changes and they had no clue. And that's one of the reasons why they were having so many issues. And I felt so bad for them. I gave them my CPT book when I left. I was like, I'll buy a new one. I'm like, here. You know, I was like, there's, so they were just clueless because they weren't getting continuing education on what those things were and what even just basic changes were. Um, so, you know, as a professional, you need whatever the correct tools are, yes. which means current coding right. books, yes. you know, for in order to do your job properly. So, you know, that just off the bat is like a form to me of continuing education because you read through and see what all the new codes are or get the um, the CPT changes, the insider's review book. That's a great book for those of y'all um, if you, you know, haven't ever had it or if you don't attend the CPT symposium. I really like their changes book. It's not real big and fast it just has the changes in it but it also gives like scenarios and different things with it so it's a really good companion book to get with the cpt book to where it might help explain some of the like stickier kind of things that if you just look at the code you're kind of going i i'm not exactly sure what that means you know so um things like that is a form of continuing education it doesn't have to be a webinar or a boot camp or, a, you know, there's many different kinds of continuing education that you can get. So um, do you have before we, you know, go on to, to other things and, and I look at anything that people have been putting in here that um, any other comments that you have on this uh, about needing that continuing education? Yeah, I can piggyback off of what you just said. It's a must right, that the, and I think things have changed, in my opinion, from our days back in the early 2000s. I agree with you. Practices were not interested in compliance just a few years ago, right? They didn't understand. And I agree with you. I've seen practices. I was a part of practices that only had that one very old CPT code book that there were there were 25 people, it. people had to share. However, that one CPT book that they all had to share was outdated, right? And those 25 professionals were busy chicken scratching 
in their ortho section, in their cardio section, again and again, making their changes, right? And highlighting and scratching out and tabbing. And it was just a cluttered mess. You couldn't decipher it. You couldn't understand yeah. what code was current then in 2018, if their book was from 2012, right? It was, yeah, it's the horror stories. Absolutely. So I think a very good thing has turned, right? Uh, um, a lot of people now do invest, the smaller practices do invest in current coding books, right? Yes. Hypothetically, sure, they can only afford one, but at least it's current for their yes. staff. Um, yes. So I do like that. I would hope that these professionals could also go out, hopefully, on their own and purchase their own CPT coding book if they're not supported by their organization. Um, because, like I said, and as we know um, from AHIMA and the APC, we're instructed, right, to go ahead and mark up those coding books on our own, to tab it yeah. up, to highlight it, to make it our own, right? And we can really only do that if the book is ours. Because like I said, yeah. if we're sharing it and doing all of that work simultaneously, it's very tricky to understand um, whose note is what and what's applicable to you. Um, yeah. But yeah, books are the key. Books and yes. resources, online or the paper book, whichever, but yes. you need to have it. Got a good comment from Lady here. She says, I found your experiences very interesting. For me, CE is essential to do my job the best I can and improve myself. I was so scared to apply to a hospital. It was intimidating for me. And here I am working for a hospital. That's right. So, I, I think that's a benefit of getting CE too, is that if you're going to ones that are applicable to your current position, is that, you know, you can hear things like I will have people that tell me when I do presentations and things where they'll say, you know, um, it was good to hear you validate what I thought or where my head was, you know, so that it, it kind of um, emboldens them in the fact that, yeah, I do know these things, you know, so I think that's, you know, a, a good, a good point to having CE2 when you're hearing those other people and going, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not nuts or, you know, I do have this down. I'm okay with this. Um, and then pick up that one little nugget that, you know, that, that person that's speaking may throw out there that you are, oh, you know, and, you know, it kind of makes that whole um, presentation, webinar, seminar, whatever it is, kind of makes it worth it when you get that piece that you're looking for. But um, I'm, I'm real glad. Thanks, lady, for, for um, you know, adding to the conversation here. And uh, I'm glad you are in a better position now. For and sure. just a couple other, Ed, Edmundo with it, the audacity of the doctor. I love that, Edmundo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the audacity, yes. Yeah, yeah you know, they, they, they're they much better now they're than better they now. were in the past, right. um, especially uh, independent physicians that yes. are running their own practices. Yeah. They really are realizing, you know, how things hinge on what coding and billing professionals are doing in their practices that's and right. how that's the lifeblood of keeping mm -hmm. their doors open. Um, you know, I tell physicians and sur like surgeons, we were talking one day and I said, you know, you could be doing surgeries all day, every day and be racking up what in your head is like, oh, you know, well, there's, you know, I did a hundred thousand dollars in surgery this month in the group. But if it's not getting out the door right, you're not going to see any of it. So, I, I mean, it, you think about that, you know, y'all hold the, the coding professionals, billing professionals, people like that that are on, you know, listening to us today, you know, y'all hold the financials of that practice in your hand, you know, which also kind of bears onto the fact that, you know, the continuing education thing is even more important. I mean, that's a heavy burden to bear, a duty, you know, and so y'all need to make sure that, you're on top of what those things are so that you can do the best for the practice that you're at. Right. That's well said, Betty. Absolutely. We have to really um, impress on our doctors that we're on the same team. 
we're on mm -hmm. their team, right? We want them to do very, very well on the business side, right? They obviously know how to do their surgeries backwards and forwards. We can't question that, right? Yeah. But when it comes to their reimbursement, that's what we do as the certified coders, as the certified billers, as the auditors, as the compliance folks in the back. We can help them, right, capture that reimbursement appropriately the first time. And if we don't have continuing education on our side, how can we help our doctors? So yeah, that's the new thing for the new year. We have to keep perpetuating that message that we are on their team. We want them to be successful. Yes. So benefits of continuing education, we've kind of, you know, uh, punched it around a couple of them um, here, but, but if you kind of, um, you know, try to, to, broaden out your thought processes on it, you know, um, if there is a, a different area that you're interested in, you know, um, doing continuing education and getting more information and more stuff into that, it might help you be able to transition, you know, to a different position. Um, you know, it may help you uh, get an increase in your salary if you're saying, you know, well, I've gone to, you know, these different conference, like the conference we were just at, you know, um, that these are the things that I learned. And and one of the things I an idea that just came to me, um, you know, I, I hear a lot from people that nowadays, you know, again, back in the day, you know, it was just like, oh, hey, I want to go to that. And it was like, OK, you know, and then they send like a group of us, you know, or, you know, it, it was not unheard of and it was not, you know, um, a, a big deal. You know, it was it was uh, all the things that you wanted to do. They were very supportive of that. But, you know, as years have come in now, uh, I hear from people that it's more of, you know, well, that's what you need to do. So you have to pay for that or it's not in the budget anymore, or maybe they get to pick one thing a year, or if it's not from this specialty that you're working in, you know, and you want to go to it, well, you have to pay for it then because it doesn't benefit the practice, you know, kind of thing. Um, so one of the things that I suggest to people, if you're in one of those kind of places, because everybody's budgets are smaller these days, there's no doubt about that, um, is that if I went to, uh, if they sent me to something, what I would do is every day I would make my own little kind of like a recap note to myself, or if there was a session that was really pertaining to the position I was holding, I would get more detail in on it, but then I would put a little PowerPoint together, um, not anything really, you know, big to do, but, and then I would come back or if not a PowerPoint at one of the places I was at, they just didn't have time for, they didn't want to see that kind of stuff, but I would do a write up then. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the things that I took away from the conference that, you just sent me to that I attended, you know, and then I listed benefits, you know, to the practice for having been there, you know, um, whether it was picking up some kind of additional revenue stream or something like that. And I would give them a report and then it was like, Oh, and, and then they got, uh, this really is worth sending people to do these things. And then the next time there was something that I said, Hey, I would like to, they were like, okay, okay. You know, here, you know, so, um, think of things like that to help get support of where you're at. If they're currently not very, uh, separative of, you know, sending people out for continuing education anymore. Um, that's just something that that uh, you know um, came into my head that that may be helpful to to some of y'all. I'm not sure, but yeah, that's a great point. Absolutely, um, to write something up like that to you know get your organization to back you to back this idea of sending you and possibly a team of people from the organization to attend this organizational bodies. Um, conference, something like that. Yeah. Especially because well, some of those things are pricier, right? Because it's actually a conference for multiple yes. days. So you really do yeah. want to get that um, support and backing from the organization 
So if someone is crafty and can write up something really winning, right, a winning message to send my team of, you know, XYZ coders to this amazing conference, um, we can bring you back so much more in return when we come back from this conference, um, you know, and then perhaps even educate the rest of the staff who didn't get to go, you know, yes. tell you about what we all learned and how we can implement it. Um, in the next quarter, in the next year, whatever, right? So that's a great point. That's a great benefit of continuing mm -hmm. education. And that's another good thing that you were saying, you know, when you come back and let's say they send you and you are the team leader, you're a member of a five person team. So they send you and then you're expected to come back and, you know, give that information to the rest of the team. Well, for those people that are looking into, hey, I'd really like to be a presenter or I'd like to be an auditor, I'd like to be a consultant, you know, um, that's a good way to start into that, um, you know, how do I put something together? How do I present it? And presenting that information to people that you work with every day and are more comfortable with maybe than a group of strangers, you know, might also have that extra benefit of giving you those uh, additional skills that you may be looking for to move to a, a different arena or a different area in the healthcare profession. Exactly right. So we were talking about the benefits for the organization as a whole, right? For continuing education. The benefits can also be for yourself individually, right? It's, it's also your education. You're also growing yourself. Professional development is the key, right? So yeah. it's, it's twofold. You can impact your organization and you definitely impact yourself by continuing education, by attending the webinars, by attending these conferences, symposiums. Um, I really think I thought about this conversation with you a lot. I really think that this pandemic of COVID-19 for like, is it almost over? It's like three years, right? Um, three years of this nonsense. But I think it really did help all of us here, you know, have the ability, it allowed us to do things virtually like we're doing today, right? It, it allowed a lot of people to um, stretch themselves, right? Be able to put something else on their resume. Like they can create webinars too. They can develop educational presentations too, right? So, so many people have leveraged the pandemic in such a way that they're also now teaching things wonderfully. I just saw that my good friend, Kimberly Joel, that Williams is on and she's brilliant. Yeah. And she, I found her in the pandemic. She came up with this amazing idea that, hey, we can't do any local chapters because they're all closed because of COVID. So how are my friends going to get continuing education? So she thought up this idea and developed these teaching modules for us to get education and webinars, right? Um, so I think a lot of folks can do that as well, right? Think about how this education can benefit, again, not only yourself and your career, but also others. How can you give back? And I think she's a great example of giving back <clears throat> to other people in the field. Um, and I think she's done a really good job through this ugly pandemic and has helped so many people um, yes, receive yes. their continuing education. So thanks, Kimberly. I see you. <laughs> yes, agreed. And uh, both of us were um, um, we, we on presented her, her program this year. So yes, uh, did. Kimberly did a great job with that she did a great and, job. and had a lot of fun. Yep. Um, so yes, definitely. Uh, so there, there's a whole lot, you know, you have your personal development, your professional development, because again, continuing education, uh, me, again, y'all, I'm, I'm an old lady, okay? I'm, <laughs> so yeah. so when we get to some of this computer stuff and people are like <laughs> whizzing around, with it, I, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh Lord, uh, I was like, you know, where is, you know, uh, uh, where's a 10 year old child that can explain this to me? Because, you know, I was just, I, I get lost. Um, 
So for me, continuing education is is doing those little classes on that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not specifically in that. It's not CEU, you know, something I'm going to to you know necessarily be looking at as a continuing education unit. But for me, it's continuing education to help me, you know, in my development with how I have to play around with all this stuff and work with all this stuff. You know, so again, you know, thinking of all of those different areas is what are, what you need to be thinking of. And those can be benefits then again of continuing education is to assist you with all of those kinds of things, not just necessarily for those that are on here that are coder coding professionals and building prof those kind of thing. It doesn't necessarily just have to be what are the codes next year and what is this it can be other things that you know play into it <clears throat> that can help you you know in your entire career development that's a great point right we need to be absolutely you can read other journals right you can read your jama like a physician does right you can read yeah. your new england medical journals right? You can read abstracts from the NIH. You can do so much education for yourself to help you do better at your job, at your niche, yeah. or where you want to propel your career to. You can do yeah. so much. Education is the yeah. key. Yep. And that's, you know, brought me to this question about is all continuing education the same? Um, and the reason why I, I my thought on this <clears throat> When the pandemic first started, you know, because prior to that, we were uh, mostly in person with everything and you were very localized as to unless you were going to travel somewhere, you know. Um, so for some things, like if there was a four hour, you know, seminar somewhere, but it was, you know, someplace that I had to take a plane to get up. Well, I was like, well, that's really nice, but, you know, I'm going to have to pass unless it comes here, you know. Uh, and then we had the pandemic. And then everything was available to everybody, basically, virtually, which I think was a one of the positives of that. But it also has um, brought about to where um, you get some. How do I say this politely? <laughs> lesser quality things that may be out there. And, and um, there's all things, you know, I, and I'm not talking about like a person that's just starting out and it's like, ew, you know, I, hey, I'm, you know, as I said, I'm, I'm aging out, you know, at some point here. So, you know, I'm always looking for other people to say, hey, why don't you try this? Why don't you do this? You know, you can present and you can, you know, so that's not what I mean. I just mean in, in, you know, where you're, you're, seeing the same issue like some subject and i won't pick on this year because i don't want to again i don't want to ruffle so let's say the icd 10 when icd 9 was going to icd 10 mm -hmm. you know you could see and and get to where you could attend 50 different presentations on it 50 webinars on it um and it was a regurgitation of just reading what the guidelines said well, I know how to read, <laughs> so I don't need somebody that's just going to read it to me because I can do that myself. So, yes, it's considered continuing education, but am I getting anything from it? You know, I, 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 I could watch 20 presentations of the same thing, and if it's all the same thing, you know, I'm not getting anything from that. What, you know... I need something that they're going to explain something to me or give examples to me. And I think sometimes that's the downfall with some of these one hour webinars. I think they're great for really super specific things, but if it's a broad topic, they have to be very broad because they can't cover it in an hour, you know? So sometimes with those, there's not a lot of examples. There's not a lot of specific things that can be given because there's just not enough time. So um, I don't think all CE is the same. I think you need to be very choosy when you're looking because even if it's free, your time is worth something. So it's not really free, you know? Uh, and sometimes you've been, I've been to some where, 
good Lord. You know, I just sit there at the end and I'm just like, well, there's an hour I'm never going to get back out of my life. You know, (laughs) know, there's so many things you could be doing, you know, other than listening to this. So you're investing your time. Um, so it does really cost you, even if it's free, it's costing you something. So, um, I am of the mindset that no, absolutely not all CE is not the same. How, how about you, Sonal? Yeah, I think you are circling around the word quality, right? We really, really need to embrace quality education in our, you were talking about CEUs, right? We really want to find and support quality educators that are in this space, right? We really want to hone in on those professionals that are in our specialty. Say if we do a lot of oncology, right? We know our specialty educators that are going to do their their job swimmingly, right? So we want to attend their webinars, right? Or if we know we're very solid in oncology, space, we can present something, get the CEU attached to it for the organizations, right? I think it's all about quality education. And you and I were talking before we um, exited the green room here, we talked about something really nice. We need to go beyond the requirement for the AAPC and AHIMA, right? So if you have like you, 55 credentials after your name, you'll need like 2000 CEUs, hypothetically, right? So you don't have to just get the bare minimum of those 2000 CEUs when your deadline comes. You can get 5000 because you embrace education, right? Um, We don't need to quickly rush to meet our CEU deadline when it's time to renew, we should be dedicated and focused to our continuing education each and every month, right? Despite the fact that we all have jobs, we need to find the time in the day or the weekend, however we carve out the time in the month for ourselves to get that continuing education. Um, And when you do that, like you and I were talking offline, we have above and beyond our numbers. We've pushed over You know, if our CEUs were to roll over, we'd have enough for years to come because we believe in education that much. So not just to meet the threshold for the credentialing bodies, right, but to go above and beyond simply because it puts us in our own career in a better light. We can do so much more for our practices, our hospitals, whoever we work for. We can do so much more. Um, Yep. And I think we need to remember that messaging, that this um, healthcare happenings today is about ourselves. It's about um, promoting ourselves and what we do by embracing the fact that we are respected coding, billing, compliance, auditing professionals in our own right. Yeah, I always... um, uh... Uh, when I'm talking, you know, I, I always say, you know, you, you can tell when you when you're having discussions with people and they'll say, oh, you know, when I attended blah, 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 they were discussing this or we're talking about this and this is kind of what I gathered from it. Or did you, you know, having that curiosity, uh, you know, is is what you need, you know, yeah. and is what you should strive for. Because either, um, you know, and, and this is something we've talked about and talked about offline and at other, you know, things with other people is that, you know, you want to take a look at whether you have a job or whether you have a profession, you know, um, and there are some people who this is a job for them. That's all it is. They get what they have to get. They get it done. They're done. And that's fine if that's what this is for you, you know, and some people are, are, are happy to do that because they have other obligations and other things. But if this is your profession for you and that's how you're looking at it, then you need to think about this as what kind of investment you're making in yourself to help, you know, propel you into, you know, maybe a better salary, maybe a different position, maybe, you know, transitioning totally into something else. All of those things 
you know, you have to invest, you know, to, to be able to reap those benefits because they don't happen by magic. You know, they, they don't just happen because it's not osmosis, right. You, it's not you just know, or you're funny or you're nice, you know, you, that yeah. you have to, you know, show that they're going to get a return on the investment they're mm -hmm. making in you. You need to invest, you know, in yourself. But we have some, some good comments here. I want to, so Pam, uh, Hey Pam, uh, saw her at the conference we, we were at too. So we got to hang out and have some fun. Uh, that's another good thing too. When you do go externally to um, continuing education kind of things um, like the, the, the conference, you know, we're, we're networking and having dinners and catching up and seeing people and, and having a good time. So Pam said uh, that it was a great point about the education being ours that you had made, Sonal. I feel there are many of us who won't attend paid education events if their employer won't pay for it. But when we take ownership of the value to ourselves and our career, we win. And that's a fabulous point. Fabulous. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so just thank you for that, Pam. And um, I liked her other, you know, not all education has meat when we were talking about it. Is it all the same? That's very true. You know, there, there's a lot of stuff that could be fluffy out there and, you know, we don't need the fluff. You know, we need, we need the meat. We need the meat and the sandwich as my, <laughs> my mom <laughs> used to say. And then a uh, lady says she thinks this a strong point. And sometimes we only want to attend free webinars just to collect CEUs. Like we were saying, when I attend a paid webinar, I'm looking for education. And I don't really think about CEUs. And I think that's a very good way to do it. Like I said, when I choose what I'm doing, I really don't look at, I, I some, I, go to a lot of things that don't have CEUs um, because it has something to do with what I need or what I'm interested in or things like that. And so I continually invest because that is how I'm going to see, you know, a, a return, you know, and being able to offer more services or talk specifically to when I'm talking to physicians and uh, PAs, APPs and stuff about things. I need to let them understand that I know these things. I understand these things. And so being able to discuss things like that, you know, I need to always be getting education for myself. That's and yeah, there's Kimberly, uh, professional advancement. Yes, exactly. For ourselves. And let's see, she, Pam says, the other piece to consider is it isn't only about the CEU. Some of the best opportunities to learn and grow are fabulous podcasts like this one in Sonals and Victoria Mall, Tony Ellums, exactly. Terry Fletcher, Sean yes. Weiss. You know, so those are things that and, and those are things that if you're um, working now, me, I'm sorry, I'm a very visual learner. And I, I really try with the podcast things. I, I so I so try, but when I'm doing the podcast, uh, I'll I'll be paying attention as I'm doing something, and all of a sudden it's like oh squirrel, you know. And I just I just <laughs> I I have such trouble doing it when it's just listening to something. I struggle with that. That's why I like the compliance guy, you know, watching Sean Weiss because he does his on LinkedIn you know, live like a broadcast. And so I don't listen to his podcast. I watch it when they're doing it because then even though I could be doing something else visually, it's, it's sinking in better because there's a visual component to it that I can look up if somebody's saying something that I really want to pay attention to, you know, and that's just me, um, you know, like the books on tape and all that kind of, I could never, ever do that. Um, but I do, I listen to yours. I listen to Terry's, you know, I, I will listen to specific subject things and, and, you know, make sure that I have my, I try to, to be well fed and, <laughs> and then just, just sit there. And I actually watch the little ticker as it goes across when your podcasts are going, that's how it, I, it helps me pay attention is I actually watch a little seconds thing move because then it's something visual for me that I can pay attention to. And I know that's kind of weird, but that's my thing. And, but that's how I still get something out of it, you know? So there's my true confession for this session. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
So we have um, Kamala, the education doesn't just benefit your current employer, but future employers as well, which again, ultimately so is true. an investment in yourself. Exactly. So yeah. Um, yeah. And then Kimberly, again, you know, that, that we're a lifetime learners in, in our field. That is definitely, definitely true. true. Right? Yeah. That, that's a true statement. So um, wrapping us up here with, you know, so, and I think we've been, you know, talking about this all the way through, but, but just pointers, if, if you have some specifics, you know, that, that what you look for um, when considering a continuing education thing, what, what, cause I kind of have gone on about me with, you know, either something that's pertaining to what I'm doing, what I want to do, or just basically something that I'm interested in. I look for reputable places, places where I've already heard their speakers before, you know, and I know who they are, um, you know, things like that, 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 and I look at their agendas and when they send those little things out that say, Hey, come to see our, I want to look and see what the points are that they say they're going to teach me. What are the objectives? If you don't have objectives, I really don't want to pay attention too much to it. Um, when I'm looking for like those in-depth kind of things podcasts and things like that are a little bit different but we even for those we put out what we're going to be talking about so with that we kind of put objectives on those too but what about you Sonal? absolutely no that that's exactly what we should be looking for for continuing education right is it coming from reputable sources right so obviously our Credentialing bodies are a must. We have to go to their sites and see what they have in the lineup for the next months ahead, right? We want to be looking at our trusted resources. Are they publishing anything? Are they doing podcasts? Are they doing the webinars? Are they doing symposiums? Are they doing boot camps? Those are all trusted resources, right? Their voices are loud and clear, and we trust them. So those are folks that I want to be a part of for my continuing education. Um, and then, like I had mentioned before, it's not always about the CEU necessarily that's attached to it, right? So if you're trying to broaden yourself and you don't have that credential in some specialty, right, but you're intrigued, you should be attending some sort of a webinar on that specialty, right? For continuing education, you might not necessarily get anything other than the education for yourself, which is huge. That's what it's about, right? So it's not anything per se, because you don't have that credential, whatever. That's not the point. The point is you want to grow and elevate yourself to become a specialist in that particular field. So go ahead and attend it. Um, if their objectives pique your curiosity and you know that's the next step you would like to take in your career. Um, and then, like I said before, education in terms of reading everything, right? You should have your list of favorite magazines and journals um, in your web feed. If you don't already get their news alerts, their news letters coming to your email feeds, right? Um, you should be a part of Becker's Hospital. You should be a part of the medical economics. You should be a part of the AMA. You should be a part of all of these things. Your Macs that are local to you, if not all of them, why not get all the Macs in your emails? That's fine too. Uh, I get, I get a whole bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I Great. like to do things like that to broaden my education. And so um, I, I just yes. want to, I, I added your um, stuff you. inside the uh, LinkedIn um, that uh, your profile for LinkedIn. And then I also re put in the uh, name of your podcast here, Paint the Medical Picture. Uh, and people can find that on like anything, right? Apple, anything, Apple and Spotify, Spotify, Google, Amazon. It's on, it's everywhere, everywhere. As well, it should be. Uh, <laughs> And I put your LinkedIn profile in there too. So if people want to uh, go on to LinkedIn yes. and connect with you and follow connect you, follow me. Yes, um, yes. things Great. like that, that would be, uh, I'm sure, appreciated. Someone's always got good stuff out there. And she does her Friday funnies where yeah. she puts little cartoons up. I love those cartoons. So, uh, so every once in a while, I share some with her and say, you know, uh, uh, maybe you want to try this one. So, maybe you want this um, one. Yep. I love, I love them. Oh my God, it's so much fun. <laughs> so uh, let's see if we have uh, a lot. 
let's see. Um, so there's my stuff. Um, okay. Well, just some thank yous here. So thanks again, lady. Uh, I'm well, glad you all found good. the topic interesting. I thought it was uh, something good to discuss because it's, you know, it, it's people need to stop and think about, you know, what you want and how you're trying to move forward in your profession and, and what that all means and not just get CEU crazy where it's all notice that we didn't really talk about CEUs too much because that's, too much. that's it, it's about continuing education, not let's find every free CEU we can and get like 9 million of them and, and stuff that I don't even pay attention half the time, um, which is one thing you, you see people too, that there will be a podcast or webinar or whatever, and they go to it and then they mute the volume and continue working as it's playing. Yeah. Right. Please. I mean, there, there's really, it, there's no value to that. You're not benefiting anybody. I mean, yes, maybe you're getting a CEU, um, but but you don't benefit yourself either because you're still exactly. continuing your job and not really paying attention to that education that exactly. you did sign up for. Right. So it's yes. you that miss out. Yeah. Yes. So invest in yourself, you know, um, vet out things that you're interested in uh, so that you're not wasting your time or your money. If it's something you're paying to go to, um, you know, and uh, keep, you know, pushing into what interests you and where you want to go. And, you know, like Sono, like myself, you know, continuing to do that, um, which we did years ago, you know, and continue to do. But that's, you know, what's propelled us to be able to do the things that we do now is because it was a continuous thing that you don't even think about. It's like, no, I need to do this. I need to go here. I need to listen to this, you know, so that you continue to grow like that and now have that broader base of knowledge and experience um, that we can kind of fall back to, you know, because we started out, you know, um, with that base of the tree that's like this, mm -hmm. you know, so that we can branch into other things and do other things, um, you know, because it's all based off of, you know, knowledge and, and good experiences and good continuing education. So um, do you have any final words for anybody since we're already uh, up at closing, our hour? Closing, so closing thoughts. Yeah. Yes. No, absolutely. We definitely have to invest in ourselves, right? This entire hour was dedicated to ourselves and propelling, getting to the next step, wherever that is, right? And you can only do that by continuing education. Invest in yourself. Keep learning. Keep growing. We are lifetime learners, right? We shouldn't just stop because we got the certification. We shouldn't just right. stop because we're in a comfortable job, right? We have to continue growing ourselves, expanding ourselves, um, make the next leap, right? Trust in yourself and you can do anything, anything so long you have education in your back pocket. I think that's the key. That's great. So I like that a lot. So with that great uh, little tidbit at the end here, I think we will um, close for our session today for this um, uh, episode of Healthcare Happenings when you all uh, tune in to see what's happening in healthcare. And thank you again, Sonal, for agreeing to, to come on with me today. It was a lot of fun. And thanks to everybody for listening. And I think um, we might have another session next week uh, because I missed last week, so I might be catching up. So watch for notice to see what's coming up soon. So um, thanks, y'all. Thank you, Betty. Thanks.